Hey guys, it's Annabelle. So this video is going to be my miscarriage story. Um, it has been uh, 19 days since um, we had the ultrasound where we found out that our little one did not have a heartbeat. Um, so I wanted to let you know what's all happened in the last three weeks and some of the decisions that were made and how I'm doing, what's all going on, and all of that kind of stuff. I'm here for you guys. Okay, so um, the day after we found out, I did post a video that um, our miscarriage at 11 weeks. Um, so you can watch that video if you want. Um, that was a very hard video for me to make, and I just wanted to thank everyone for all your love and support and your thoughts and your prayers. Um, I appreciate it so much. It means so much to have support um, when you're going through something so horrible. Um, so, how the last few weeks have gone. Okay, so on the Friday before Easter weekend, I think it was the 25th of March, we went in for an ultrasound and they didn't find a heartbeat and all of the um, measurements and things came back um, that the baby measured between 11 weeks and 11 weeks one day depending on what they were looking at and we were supposed to be 11 weeks and four days so they looked all around and all of my my stuff was working properly um, and my body was still trying to um, like feed the baby and this is how they explained it to me my body did not know that the baby was gone yet but there was nothing going to our baby there was no heartbeat um, so it was within a few days of our ultrasound that our baby actually um, its heart stopped beating so that was really really hard um, very hard it was I had such high hopes and everything that everything was going well and our world kind of came crashing down um, with every pregnancy there's always a chance that something might happen and and it was explained to me and it doesn't make it any easier that like 25% of pregnancies end in miscarriage and I've had a miscarriage in the past I've had three children and so it's just probable that um, I would have another miscarriage. And that's not easy to hear and everything. And on Friday, um, they did a whole lot of explaining that everything has to work just flawlessly and how babies are a miracle. And this is all things that I know. And that there is obviously something wrong. Usually it's a chromosome um, like defect thing that happens um, and they had people look at my ultrasound and it all came back that um, all of my stuff was working properly I had concerns that my uterus was tipped if that is what caused it and they said no because this is the first pregnancy that I've had um, where my uterus has been tipped so that was a concern for me because that hasn't happened and then I had a miscarriage but they said that that was not the cause for it. So we pretty much won't know exactly what happened. Um, it's just guessing right now, um, but it still doesn't make it any easier. So on Friday, um, since I was supposed to be 11 weeks, um, usually if you miscarry early, they will let you miscarry on your own. But everyone who I talk to um, they were all talking that I had to have a DNC and that if nothing happened, then my dogs are going to fight now, <laughs> that I would have to have a DNC and they were going to schedule it for Wednesday if nothing happened between Friday and Tuesday. Um, I was supposed to call my doctor on Tuesday morning, um, but I got my first um, piece or sign of a miscarriage on Monday. Um, I had a little um, red piece of tissue that came out on Monday and so on Tuesday when I called my doctor um, I had done a whole ton of research between Friday and 
Tuesday before I talked to him. And so I talked to him a lot about how I really wanted to try and do it on my own, let my body work, let my body figure out that the baby was gone and let it go by myself. Um, he did agree to let me do that. Um, I am not a like procedure person. Um, I don't just want to have a procedure done just to have it done. Um, obviously, if it was necessary, absolutely necessary to have a DNC, then I would go ahead and do that. So the, the things that they were most concerned about um, and what is usually the concern with miscarriages is um, infection or hemorrhage. And so that was all explained to me and everything. And so what I did and was what I was advised to do was take my temperature four times a day. And if my temperature went um, above 101, I was going to have to have the DNC done. Now I've been taking my temperature all along and I still have to take my temperature now. Um, but if my temperature goes above 101, um, they assume that I have infection and I need to get in right away. So I was constantly taking my temperature. My temperature this whole time has not gone above um, like 98.9 was the highest that it was and that was like a week and a half ago. Um, but otherwise I usually tend to run low. My body temperature is usually right around um, 97 degrees. But even with that slight increase, with one degree, um, he wasn't concerned about it. So how the last few weeks have gone is basically I have had cramping um, and it hasn't been consistent and I was getting just a piece here and a piece there of some bloody tissue and things like that. But I would like cramp up and it wasn't anything super major. Um, like I could still keep doing what I was doing. Um, I was not supposed to just lay down, sit down and sulk. And with three kids and a husband and a house and my job, um, I couldn't do that anyways. Um, I am a busy mom running around doing all this stuff. And so I've just had just pieces and just like a little bit of cramping. Um, so one of the things that I had to have done was get a Rogam shot. I have a A negative blood type. Um, I did a video on the Rogam shot previously. So if you're interested about that, it's really easy to look up on the internet as to why you need it and all that stuff. Um, that was really difficult for me because usually you get that shot around 28 weeks. Um, and so when I went in to have it, um, the lab staff and the nursing staff that gave me the shot didn't know that I had had a miscarriage. So they were like, congratulations, this is so exciting. Are you at least 28 weeks along? And it was like, no, I had a miscarriage, so I still have to have the Rogam shot. Um, but again, it would take too long to explain that here in this video, so I'm not going to explain that now. Um, I will do another video on it if somebody wants me to. Just leave a comment below if you want to know more about that. Um, so that was a difficult thing. Um, another difficult thing was people calling and checking in on me. And it just was like, oh, did anything happen yet? And it was like, nope, nothing happened yet. Um, I've got lots of opinions and everything. Everyone trying to be helpful and everything. Um, but a lot of people thought I was crazy for not wanting to have a DNC and wanting to wait it out. Um, I knew that it could take weeks and I talked to my doctor and he was going to let me as long as I didn't have a fever or show signs of like hemorrhage or infection that he was going to let me go for up to six weeks. So I was prepared for that. Um, waiting is not for everyone. Um, I would not recommend it um, if you are not dealing well with the situation. Now, with my first miscarriage, um, it all happened within 24 hours from the start of bleeding 
to the going in for an ultrasound, finding out that the baby no longer had a heartbeat, to everything coming out was a 24 hour period. This time, it was way different. Um, this time, it took 18 days from when I found out. So from when the baby actually, like when the heart stopped beating, it was about three weeks um, that it took for everything to come out and everything. So um, on, let's see, last Wednesday, I got a like goosh of blood and I was going out with my friends and I was getting ready and all of a sudden I just felt just this big just goosh of blood and I was like oh my goodness and then I was like okay I decide I'm gonna go out and it's gonna do it tonight well that's all I got that day and I didn't get anything else until this last Saturday so it was another three days before I got anything else. Um, I had like a light period and some like pieces of blood clots and things like that all day on Saturday and into the night on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I got absolutely nothing. <laughs> and then on Monday, so two days ago, um, it started back up again um, it, in mid-morning on Monday. And I got, I started getting more and more cramping that got closer and closer together. I started to get more and more pieces and bigger pieces and it all kind of died down um, right around bedtime so I decided to go to sleep. And then I woke up at about 3.45. I had tremendous cramping and I just, I knew that that was the point that it was going to happen. It felt like labor um, and so I didn't wake anybody up I went downstairs and I just kind of I did some rocking and some um, just being bent over our couch kneeling down and all of that stuff and I was able to pass everything and everything came out this is going to be TMI but everything came out in four big huge hunks. Um, that type of stuff doesn't gross me out. Um, I had a miscarriage previously. I've had three children. I like to look at my placenta and all the stuff that comes out afterwards. Some people think I'm crazy, um, but I like to look at that kind of stuff. So, um, and plus I needed to tell my doctor what all was coming out and everything, what was all happening. So, four big huge hunks. It took about an hour and a half because there was a little bit of space in between each piece that came out. Um, but I had three big huge blood clot uh, kind of pieces and then an actual like formed tissue piece. Um, so everything came out and I was able to go back to sleep um, my best friend is Depends right now. Um, they're amazing for this because I don't have to worry about anything leaks and all that kind of stuff. I can lay down, I can sit up, I can do whatever. Um, but yeah, so everything came out and I've just had light bleeding since then. I haven't had any cramping. I have a few more um, smaller pieces, smaller blood clots coming out, but that is very normal, and that'll be my normal for the next couple days, and it should taper off. Um, and if it doesn't taper off or I get um, a fever, then I'm supposed to call my doctor right away, and I'll start antibiotics, and we'll see where we go from there. But as of right now, I feel really good. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised how good I feel. Um, I have not been able to work out. Um, it's been very uncomfortable to work out. So I haven't worked out for the last two weeks. Um, I probably am not going to work out this week. I'll probably wait till next week and then it'll just be some light, um, light workout and see how I feel make sure everything feels good. Because um, one thing right now is down there, after you have a miscarriage, everything's still inflamed. Now, I talked to my doctor yesterday, 
and mid-afternoon after everything kind of died down and it was more like a medium to light period bleeding and so I talked to him I explained everything to him and he just gave me the go-ahead to continue on with life um, we talked a little bit about um, if we would decide to try to conceive in the future he wants me to wait at least through one cycle um, if not two depending on how we feel and what's all going on and all of that but he said that like now it's not a standard to wait three cycles before you try again that it's usually only one and then see how that goes um, and possibly two. Um, me and my husband still have to talk about things, see where we're at um, emotionally and all of that. Um, I do want a fourth child, um, but you know, like if we get pregnant again, there's always the chance that this could happen again and it is so difficult and it would be really tough to do it again and if it happened again, I really doubt that we would try again because just emotionally, the, this whole process, it's a process and it's very, very difficult. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Um, I've got a couple videos that I can do on this topic. Um, some like follow-up videos that I did for my last miscarriage, um, how my relationship is doing um, now after we've had our second miscarriage, how things are different. Um, between my first miscarriage and this miscarriage. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. But I am doing well. Um, I have come to terms with everything. And now that everything is kind of finishing up, um, we're ready to just keep moving on through life. So anyways, any questions or comments, leave them below. Thank you so much for watching this. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye, guys.